Hi, I'm Pam Collins. I'm Director of Gardens with the Department of Plant and Soil Sciences, and this is the Veterans Memorial Rose Garden. Uh, the program here is Gardening Through the Seasons, and today I want to talk about uh, the deadheading of roses and light summer pruning of roses for the different kinds of roses. When we first start growing in the season, uh, the roses are beautiful, they've had their first bloom, and they're gorgeous. But the roses do eventually age, and those roses turn dark colors, and they turn brown. So we want to uh, remove some of that so that the plant looks as beautiful as we possibly can. Roses are going to bloom regardless of what we do, but in a high uh, value area, such as your backyard or your patio or your front entrance, you want the roses to look good at all times. And that's why we deadhead the roses on a regular basis. The roses will recur in bloom. They uh, cycle through uh, on a regular basis. And you know they will set new growth and new bud. But it will look its best and it will bloom the most if we do a little regular pruning. This is a hybrid tea, and it has a certain structure that's characteristic of this plant. When we want to deadhead this plant, look at the stem arrangement. The first leaves below the bloom are going to usually be a three leaflet leaf. As you move down the stem, you will find that they change to five leaflets per stem. And that's what we want to look for when we start to cut this plant. We also want to go far enough back into the plant that we have the ability to produce a nice, uh, strong stem. So we may go a little bit further than the first five leaflet leaf. Uh, it depends on how healthy the plant is and what we want this plant to, uh, how we want it to grow, how we want it to rebloom. So you will hear uh, uh, to go down to at least the first five leaflet leaf. I think in this case, uh, in order to produce a nice stem for a new bloom, we want to go a little bit further than that. We also want to look for a bud that's outward facing. So uh, perhaps this would be a good, this leaflet would be a good place to prune back to so that it will produce a bud that will produce a new shoot with a bloom. When you want to uh, actually make the cut, The bud will come out of the axle of this leaf, and we want one that faces outwards. In order to make our cut, we want to cut so that the cut is about a quarter inch above the bud or the axle of the leaf, and we want to angle it slightly so that the cut finishes up behind the bud, just above and behind the bud. So this is the cut that will happen. Now, we have approximately a 45 degree angle. We have about a quarter of an inch above the bud of the leaflet, and a new shoot will emerge from that very shortly and produce a new bloom. Sometimes we want to cut even harder than the uh, previous cut that I showed. And the reason for that is if the, the shrub is uh, the stem is much taller than the rest of the shrub or the, the range of shrubs like we have here. We have several different shrubs. And so it's all right to do that particularly in the summertime uh, up to a certain point. Now this is late September. Uh, we probably wouldn't want to do this much later in the season because we don't want to stimulate a lot of growth late in the season before uh, winter, se winter weather sets in. But it's okay to do that for now. We have this long stem that's much taller than the rest of the plants, and we want to bring that back into line. So again, we're going to make a very similar cut to that of a, a regular deadheaded cut. We want to make it, uh, I'm gonna go down to this area where we already have some new growth coming out, and I'm going to do uh, a 45 degree angle, uh, sloping away from the new growth that's going to be coming out. And this new growth will come out 
um, away from the center of the plant. We always want the plant to have a nice vase shape uh, growth to it so that we have a more open framework of the plant and so air can circulate around the plant. So here is the cut, quarter inch above the stem. There we go. All right, the last plant that I showed you was a hybrid tea and it, uh, it is pruned in the way that I described. Uh, this is a different class of roses. This is a floribunda, and it has a much more shrubby appearance, has lots more canes, and it blooms with multiple buds per stem. So that means that we need to prune it just a little bit differently from a hybrid tea for its best effect. It's primarily used as a, uh, uh, a garden plant and not as much for cutting as the hybrid tea would be. Here's a close-up of a cluster of blooms on a floribunda. If you'll notice that we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different buds on this uh, bloom head, and they come out and they're at different stages, anywhere from a tight bud to a completely spent bloom. In this case, for, for maximum show, we would simply take out the spent bloom and leave the others undisturbed and it's just a matter of clipping the bloom out. So you don't have to worry about how many leaflets there are. We just want to make sure that this plant looks nice and clean when we're finished. A lot of uh, floribundas and a number of shrub roses, uh, particularly the modern shrub roses, will bloom in large clusters. And it would be tedious to try to bloom, uh, to prune out uh, individual blooms as they fade. Uh, this is a good example of a modern shrub rose, and you can see that uh, it blooms in very large clusters of flowers. Uh, and they have different ages, from, very, uh, from the first ones to open up to the latest ones where we still have buds. So the best way to handle this is simply let the, head, the, the bloom head bloom completely out and uh, enjoy uh, the the color that it provides. And then when it finishes, this is what the spent bloom head will look like. So in order to remove the spent head, this bloom head, uh, so that uh, new growth can come on and re-bloom, we simply remove the whole stalk. And that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. Now, that's all the cut there is to that cut. The plant is uh, clean looking, it's fresh, it'll put on new growth that will rebloom and show uh, more color later this fall. Uh, this is a miniature rose, uh, and it's smaller in all of its respects to the other classes of roses that I've been showing. Uh, and, and it has these lovely little tiny blooms, very delicate looking, um, but it too needs to be cleaned up periodically during the season. Uh, however, you know, I would lose my patience if I had to, to go in there and, and cut out each and every one of those spent blooms. And for a plant like this, it would be much more simple simply to remove the spent uh, blooms in just a, uh, a light snipping and shaping of the plant. And that's what I'm going to show here. Just to remove some of the, the uh, dead spent blooms and have the plant look a little bit neater. Nothing very uh, precise about this, uh, more like you would trim a regular landscape shrub. This is a modern shrub rose, a buck rose, and it has uh, a lot of characteristics of the old garden roses. Uh, this particular plant will set fruit, particularly later in the year, and the fruit is a very colorful aspect of the plant. Uh, if you uh, notice that the, the plant here, has all, it's still blooming in a few places, but the fruit has already started to form. When you prune a plant, you know, a rose, you take away the ability for that plant to set fruit. So for this particular plant, it's important to stop pruning late in the summer and allow the uh, spent blooms to uh, remain on the plant and for the fruit to form so that you have that fall color. Well, today I've shown you a little bit about the deadheading and summer care of roses. 
And as you can see, that with uh, a good bit of care, uh, proper pruning, you can enjoy blooms all the way from the first ones in May well in through uh, the fall season. I'm Pam Collins with Gardening Through the Seasons.